Buenas tardes, señores de Fly Fish Food. Mi nombre es Chich y estoy aquí para darte una mosca. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, we're gonna tie up a, a, a terrestrial pattern here today. If you're familiar with the fly called the stone flopper, you need to check it out if, you, if you're not because it's an awesome terrestrial, um, but it's a little bit bigger profile. We're gonna tie a smaller one. This one is tied on a size 12 Gamakatsu R18B. Look at this beast. This is an awesome, awesome hook. Okay, so here's the thing. And it's got Nano Smooth Coat, which is Teflon coating. And uh, we've been fishing this hook for almost a year now. And uh, it really, really penetrates well. We like it a lot. Anyway. To tie this fly, I'm going to use some uh, 6 aught MFC thread. And I like the 6 aught because it's about 100 denier. So it's right in between like a 70 and 140. It's really, really good for this style of fly. I'm going to be doing a rusty brown or cinnamon colored fly. The thread's called rusty brown. But you could use 70 denier UTC on this as well. But it's a really simple fly. I think it came to be because I was late tying for a trip one time and I just wanted something simple. Now one of the cool products I'm going to use on this is called Beaver Dubbing Plus. It's made by Hemingways. Um, this stuff is awesome because it's like a... Let me get a clump of it here. It's beaver dub, but it's got really, really fine antron in it. So it's just got a little tiny bit of flash. Uh, so it's kind of like a little spectrumized dub. And it dubs down really tight with just the right amount of uh, buggy. So we're just going to dub up a body here. So I'm going to kind of create a little bit of a taper. Not going to be the cleanest body. You want it just a little bit buggy. I'm going to add just a little bit more. But this stuff's really, really good for like elk hair caddis, um, just parachute dries. It comes in a bunch of colors. And this one is orange. Hand wrote it in for me. Okay, from here I'm going to take a two millimeter foam strip, and this is root beer craft foam. You can see uh, it doesn't have to be the straightest piece of foam, but it's roughly the the width of the hook gap. And I'm going to trim off the round off the edges like that. And you gotta have a poop colored lighter again, and I'm just gonna lightly touch that to the, the foam and it's gonna round off those edges really nicely. Okay, so with this you want the, the foam to go a little bit past the body. So I'll just tie this in with a few wraps. And then I'm, I'm going to get more dubbing and dub up to the hook eye. Okay, before I dub that up though, I'm going to take a little tiny bit of super glue. And I'll stick this right here. Just to kind of seat it. So it's a little bit of a clumpy section. Looks like my super glue seeped in a little bit. That's fine. So I'm going to pull this over here and tie it down. So I've got a little bump like that. And now I'm going to advance my thread back over the top of that to that previous tie-in point. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to tie in a wing. 
So the wing's real basic. This wing is EP trigger point fiber in Quicksilver, but you can also use PMD or Western Caddis Gray, I think is a color, or any of the grayish colors uh, work for this. So once I have this tied in, I'm just gonna grab that and pull my foam over the top of it and trap it down. You can see that's a that's a lot of mess right there. So I'm just going to take the wing and trim that a little bit longer than the body. And then I like to make the little buggy uncinko beetle type eyes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cross over the top of this thread or the the head here like that. Do one loop around the eye of the hook and then come back over to make a little crisscross. Totally unnecessary, I know that, but it looks cool. So I'm going to take a crusher leg in clear, I think it's brown barred clear, and I'm doing this the legs Curtis's way, because he threw a fit. Not really, it's really the best way. So I tie him in like that, and I grab one side and move it to place, and Take the other side and move that to place. And then trim that jobber. So those legs are tied in long on purpose so I can kind of move them around. Now to add visibility to this fly, and you'd be surprised how low it sits, I'm going to take some EP trigger point fiber in chartreuse. maybe a little bit thinner than the segment you used for your wing. And I'm just gonna tie that in right here over the head, leave it a little bit long, and then I'm gonna get just a little bit more dubbing to clean up that tie-in point. So just a little bit of dubbing and I'm gonna take my take my trigger point stuff and get it out of the way and this will help those legs to sit kind of more at a, a nice 45 degree angle. And once I have that in there, the reason I left this foam long is because it makes it easier to tie this EP stuff in and keep everything right where it's supposed to be. So I'm just going to trim that off. It's just a little tiny indicator. And I'll trim this foam piece right about there. So to, to finish the fly, I'll move the EP stuff and I'll go home, take my thread down that little ramp that I made and whip finish right at the eye. You can use whatever head cement you like there. And then I'll, I'll take the, the legs and trim them. So the easiest way to get your legs the same length and maybe the back one's a little bit longer than the front is just push them all forward and just trim them. Just like that. I don't like the legs very long at all. Anyway, that's called the mini flopper. Uh, my favorite colors to tie it in are this cinnamon and then I do a black one and then a purple one. Uh, this also will be a fly uh, that will be available through Fulling Mill very soon. So ask your fly shop for it. It works. Even Curtis can catch fish on it.